Hello, hello everyone. My name is George. I'm a security analyst here at Hellbridges and today I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube page. Hellbridges is a cyber security company based in Thika, Kenya and we offer services in the cyber security space. We do vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. We also do digital forensics and incident response. We also offer security as a managed service to organizations that may not have the capacity to have a full-blown security operations center. We also offer cyber security awareness training to staff and we also offer cyber insurance. We, apart from that, we are also ISO 27001 certified, meaning that for all the services that we offer, we are audited to ensure that we keep up with the recommended industry standards. I, I'd highly encourage you to head over to our website, that is www.tlbridges.co.ke, to have a complete list of the services that we offer, the products that we offer, and also the clients that we've worked with before. I'd also highly encourage you to consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to this YouTube page for more of this content. So today we'll be looking at XML external entities or vulnerabilities, also known as XXE. And these vulnerabilities occur in incorrectly configured XML parsers. So, and we've said that uh, the, the XML parser uses uh, XML language. And for us to understand how the vulnerability occurs in XXC, we have to understand the XML language. Uh, so XML stands for Extensible Markup Language and it's similar to HTML. But while HTML is used for the structure of the web page, XML is used for storage and also data transfer. So a few places that we can see XML being used, it's used mostly in config files. It's also used in APIs. It's also used in uh, the layout of Android mobile application and also RSS feeds, you know, it, it has quite a number of uses. And the reason for this is because loved by, it's loved by developers. Number one, it's a very uh, simple, uh, it's, it's a very simple language. Number two, it's human readable. And number three, uh, it's, it's used, it's supported by a number of code editors. So, you know, you can understand why uh, it's so extensively used. So for us to understand how their vulnerability occurs in XXC, we have to understand the structure of, uh, of XML, right? So uh, XML has three main parts. The XML language has three main parts. The first part is the metadata, and this is where uh, we tell the parser what, XML, what version of XML you're going to be passing it to, right? And I wish I'd had, I had, uh, had like something I could draw over here for us to understand, but you're going to, once we, go to the, we get into the lab, will have a better understanding. So number two is the root element, and this is the pretty much you could think of it as the as the body of the uh, of the of the XML document, right? This is where you 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 put uh, your meat and potatoes and your carrots and your cabbages over there. So this is the the root element, and it has to be there. It is it has to be there. It's only supposed to be one, right? And also the third uh, part is the DTD also known as the document type, uh, uh, the data type document. So, uh, the document type definition, right? So, uh, and this, the DTD comes on top of the, uh, on top of the root element, right? So we have, the structure is that we have the, uh, the emitter data, and then we have the DTD, and then we have the root element, right? So the vulnerability, like, uh, like we've said, the vulnerability occurs in a misconfiguration in a misconfiguration of the XML parser. So the parser, you know, can run on the web application on uh, on the web application, and so it passes the XML. Uh, uh, it passes the XML file. You know, whatever is stored, whatever is stored in the XML file, it passes that uh, to the web to the backend web application, right? So there are different types of uh, vulnerabilities, that, uh, XXC vulnerabilities that we can uh, list. We're not going to go into details, uh, into detail today, no, at least not for today. Uh, the first one is the inbound, where we can uh, retrieve the local contents of the web server. The second one is the error-based, where it's pretty much similar to blind SQL injection. Uh, we'll have a look, a look at SQL injection in later, vid in later videos. And also the third one is that we have an out of band where we will have no visible output uh, in, in the response after we pass the XML, uh, the XML document to the XML parser, right? So uh, we're going to just head over to our lab, see, uh, see the proof of concept and for us to have a better understanding of, of how the XML entity uh, vulnerability occurs. 
And before you even get into that, so severe is uh, is the XXC vulnerabilities that if you see if you look at the if you look at the the the, the major bug bounty payouts, you know most of them exist in the XXC and also the SSRF. You know we have uh, bug bounty payouts of upwards of ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. So it's it's really critical, right? So uh, I'm already on my Portuga and Portugas are really really uh, it's a really really uh, res uh, rich resource that you should check out great for learning it has a lot of labs that you could look at you know it's really uh it's, it's a it's a great place to learn and to practice legally right remember you have to stay legal you have to uh, do our, pr uh, our practices uh, legally so i'm going to click on access the lab and going to talk my traffic through bab save our making so as it's and the reason for that is how any different dtds inside the document similar to the to the J. so in this one in the dtd how it's embedded and also calling other dtds right so you can have a dtd calling dtd a dtd2 dtd b dtd dtdc and so forth and so forth right uh you know it uh, it can get it can get uh pretty crazy in a in a in a moment so uh, so we have our lab over here. This is an online shop, and you just want to uh, you just want to intercept the traffic that will be going to will be going to the backend and see how we can modify uh, we can modify that uh, to have a look at the internal structure of the of the web server. So you can click on this uh, this product right here. I have a look at it. Uh, let's say you want to check the stock how much stock do they have in the paris store uh, check stock and hopefully we have intercepted that into bap so http proxy and yes so in our request methods we want to, to look at the post request because in the in the online shop we we sent a post request looking for uh, the number of stock that is remaining so just going to click on that post and have a look at it and as you can see over here uh, it's using exam it's using xml so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this to repeater so you can be able to manipulate fa manipulate it further in order to understand how uh, how it works so like uh, we were saying in the in the introduction of the video an xml a properly uh, a properly structured xml document usually have has three main parts and the first one you said is the is the metadata so that this this will be it this is the one telling the uh, the parser the xml parser what version of xml we are uh, we are using so and also the encoding right so over here is uh, over here is the is the version 1.0 and then the second one this will be the root element over here and so this is the root element like i said it's the it's the it's the juice you know it contains everything that uh it, it contains the the significant uh information that will be sending to the uh, to the xml person so and the third one that you'd want to uh, include will be the dtd right the document type definition and in that let me just uh i have it saved in my mouse pad so just want to copy it so that we can move a little bit faster so copy that go back to my lab and then i'm going to paste this over here so now we have the three uh, critical uh, the three critical elements that we discussed uh, that we're discussing right the metadata the dtd and also the root element so uh, as you can see we do not need that we, 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 we it's not mandatory for us to have the DTD but uh, for us to uh, for us to have the uh, the inbound uh, to exploit the inbound uh, DTD uh, the inbound excessive vulnerability we have to we have to have the DTD defined in the document right so over here we have the DTD and we've, uh, we have the DTD and we've given it the name test and inside that DTD we have the entity over here that we've declared so we've declared an entity called xxc and this xxc uh, entity is referring to a file uh, to the etsy pass wd 
so the system keyword over here is referring to uh, is, is, is basically telling the person that we, we, we want to reference an external file we want to, to reference an external file on the web server right and then uh, what we're going to do is that we want to reference this entity in the products uh, inside the inside the root element so that whatever whatever is going to be returned over here is going to be dis displayed back on the in the root element so just going to do that and the way we reference the we reference an entity is we do that by inputting an ampersand and the name of the entity in our case is xxe xxe and then a semicolon at the end right so just to check that everything is okay we have the we have the metadata we have the dtd and also have the root element and with that we can send it to, to our web server and see what uh, what comes back right so just click on send give it a few minutes and as you can see uh, we got invalid product id which uh, which is the one that we, we input over here the entity that you put in the product id but we got the etsy pass wd file right so this is pretty critical and you know we, as you can see we can see the uh, the various users that are in the that are that are on the server we have uh, a user called helma we also have a user called carlos we have a user called peter and with this information we can uh, continue to uh, exploit it further we can continue to exploit it further get additional information let's say their password uh, you know we can we can we can do so much with this so that's it for me that's it for for this video I hope you learned something uh, i'm going to leave a link to the uh, to the Portuguese lab and also a few resources for us to, for you to just understand how xxe uh, vulnerability vulnerability occurs until then thank you and i'll see you next time Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you found it informative, please you know, leave a like, a share, or even commenting down below on what you'd like us to do next. If you'd like any of the services that we earlier mentioned, uh, you could give us a call on 0703-412-771, or you could write to us through our office email, that is office at yellbridges.com, or if you're ever in town, you could visit us. We are based at T Plaza, that is in fourth floor. Until next time, have a good one.